Hey everyone, how you guys doing out there? Hiya, 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 hiya. It's Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer, saying what is up, what's going on, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the game gallery. This is the place where we showcase games. Lots and lots of games, because we like games. That's what we do. That's one of the things that we seriously like. And in truth, we got a lot of good stuff planned for you guys today. But this episode, we're going a little dark. So, before we get started, let's uh, let's handle a little business. You know, just a little bit of business. Just say, hey, what's up to the business and all that jazz. Um... And um, yeah, went through all that. And again, the music didn't play. I do all this stuff, but hey, it's a thing. But yeah, so let's uh, deal with just a little bit of business here. Business, 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 business. And um, I want to welcome everybody to the show. Look at all that. Got my groove back. Yeah. I want to welcome everybody to the show. I want to welcome all the newcomers. If you guys are here for the first time, thank you very much. We are here to talk about games and games that people might like that may not be in the mainstream, but might actually be within the purview of what you guys like. If you guys want to join the show or you guys have any questions or anything that you want to launch at us, I've got this little device right here to answer any emails or questions or anything like that. And all you have to do is pull up a keyboard and type in back in the deck at gmail.com. It's B-A-C-K-I-N-T-H-E-D-E-C-K at gmail.com. You can also subscribe to our Instagram and our other social media platforms like Twitter. All you got to do is go to socialmediaplatform.com like Instagram.com slash back in the deck or Twitter slash back in the deck. And you will be able to get a hold of us directly, like, follow, subscribe. We also have a YouTube channel that I update periodically. You know, I'm not real big on doing the YouTube thing because of the algorithm and all the rules and all that stuff. But, you know, you can subscribe to us there, have easy access to stuff to show your friends and all that jazz. Um, we do a lot of shows here, and I mean a lot of shows. And a lot of people can't see the shows um directly they just they they can't do that and i understand that because sometimes hey sometimes life gets in the way you got to do your thing right and that's perfectly cool if you guys miss a show and you guys want to oh i don't know catch up on what you missed or anything like that that's easy all you got to do is head over to soundcloud.com slash bid underscore p and look at all that we are on the soundcloud and we're working on other platforms but on soundcloud even if you don't like the interface i have everything set and i pay a decent amount of money to do this every month so that you guys can download our episodes and listen to them at your leisure that's right if you guys like what you see and you want to do the thing or you guys like listening to the conversations that we have or the topics of conversation you can download them you can keep them and you can listen to them whenever you want in the car on road trips in the car on the way to work um in your cubicle if you've got one of those jobs that you really don't have to pay attention because you're just pushing a button over and over again we've all had those kinds of jobs now if you guys want to help us out in a very direct manner that is really easy all you got to do is go over to patreon.com slash bid underscore p and become a decker now I'm not asking you guys to become a Decker if you're broke. I understand. However, if you think we are cooler than a couple of Hostess cupcakes, sign up for a dollar a month. Perfectly fine. You know, if we're cooler than a snack, one snack a month gets you access to our entire archive of stuff that, honestly, is only available to the Deckers. Um, and at $1 a month, you are officially a Decker. That is what you can do. That is the stuff that you got access to. And if you guys want your own rating, your card rating, well, there are higher tiers and they come with various rewards. People like 
Her Majesty the Queen, Shannon Boom Boom Lay, um, His Majesty Paul D. Mansfield, and of course our ace in the hole, Jennifer Kroll. That's right, I didn't even mean to rhyme because I hate speaking like that. I truly do. So, come on over, join the Patreon, and do all that stuff. So, there we go. Now, like I said, today, we gonna get dark. Um, happy end of Black History Month. I wanted to do a thing on Dwayne McDuffie, but why wait for Black History Month? I might do something for his birthday, or I might do something for, you know, the anniversary of when he made it big in comic books, but he is a hero of mine, and I'm mentioning him now because the History Month is almost up. So, you know, big shout outs to Milestone Comics and... When I do my show on Dwayne McDuffie, you guys will see what an influence and impact he's had on not just me, but more people than you think. But when I say we're getting dark today, I'm talking about dark theme. If you guys got the, what's the term, the little announcement that came on around, um, you know, you know how when it's like, you know, we go live and you guys get that notification because you're following, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, know what I mean, say no more. Um... I said today we're going to talk about authoritarian and totalitarian rule in RPGs. Now, I told you guys a long time ago, I don't get political on this show. I don't talk about modern politics. I don't talk about anything that you might see in the rest of your Facebook feed. And I'm going to keep that promise because doing this job makes me happy. It really makes me happy. Um, And I want to stay that way. So, what is this? Yes, our music is going down and now it's coming back up because why not come back up? That's what I got to say in regards to that. And um, I want to give a massive shout out to, of course, um, our boy Taz Jetter. Now, Taz, Taz is a very, very cool dude that makes some very cool music. As a matter of fact, I wanted to feature a track today from his YouTube channel. And this is from, um, this is his beat for Hurts to Feel. Um, you guys can find that on the YouTube. Look at that. Oh, hey, look at that. Yeah. And you can find this, you can find this track on YouTube. Um, I will leave a link in the stuff below there we go that's a lot better yeah i'll leave a link when i put the description on this and all that stuff but yeah you guys can definitely check out these beats they're all tranquil and super cool what is up to you guys over at double toasted um major shout out love hanging with you guys in vegas um so yeah so that is again the music from taz um taz tim jetter and he was nice enough to help us with our music problem because the funky beat that I play during our showing your e- showing the email stuff, that is a thing that I wrote, I composed, and I recorded. The thing is, I can't do that all the time. So I reached out to this dude and this dude was like, hey, what's up? And he hooked us up with this. Hey, boom, boom. Boom, boom. That's right. So yeah, so he hooked us up with that. You guys can find him on Facebook, believe it or not. Just look for Taz Tim Jetter. You know, one of our men of color right here. And this guy's been a composer and a beat maker and a producer and all that stuff for a long time. I mean a long time. So yeah. Because let's face it, you can't always do it by yourself. Now today's episode we are dealing with an older game and by older i mean this thing came out like 20 or some years ago now one of the reasons i focus on a lot of these games is because y'all don't need me to talk about D. you put in D in youtube and it's everywhere everywhere dungeons and dragons dungeons and dragons here dungeons and dragons there dungeon dragons everywhere so I talk about the other stuff because, well, let me let me start off with a little bit of a story. Um, my brother, Keanu, is the one that got me into comic books when I was younger. And he 
loved Marvel Comics. Loved them. Loved them, loved them, loved them. Did not like, um, did not like DC Comics because he couldn't identify with the DC characters. But, growing up in our neighborhood, that's all we knew. And, fast forward the clock, 35 years, and I took him with me to a comic book convention so that I could do floor interviews and he volunteered to be my camera guy. And he was blown away. He didn't know about Image and Dark Horse and IDW and the plethora of independent press. And he's like, man, doing all this stuff, maybe I could write and draw the comic book that I've been wanting to draw and it would get published. And I'm like, yeah, bro, write it. I know who to hand it to. We can get you out there. He didn't even know about Milestone which essentially was the fubu of comic stuff, which was for us, by us, and that's where all of us get things like Static, you know, Static Shock, and Ricochet, and Rocket, and, you know, those guys. So, not Rocket Raccoon, something else. Anyway, <clears throat> um, I want to give a major shout out and a what's up to NP City before we get started. Woo, yeah, check it out, boom, boom, boom. It was, it was, and yes, yes, um, Double Toasted or Mr. Diaz, you do need to play with us. If you hadn't been, um, if you hadn't been working and doing your job, you could have played with us in Vegas, so, you know, it's just one of those things. Um, so today I'm focusing on a game from one of my favorite companies, which is Fantasy Flight Entertainment, and this company has been in the game for a long time, and when I say a long time, I mean at least 30 years okay and um these guys primarily do board games okay and when i say they do board games i mean board games <laughs> okay these dudes have so many board games twilight imperium various things of rush um one of my favorite board games being um game of thrones which is again um one of my one of my favorite board games that are out there but they also do role-playing games now i've talked a lot about a few things um and the big thing i've talked about over the years has been um um the open gaming license okay and with the open gaming license um this is something that wizards of the coast came up with all these years ago okay and it was oh you like playing D&D but you don't want to play in our D&D uh, in our D&D world that's perfectly fine you don't have to play in our D&D world um you don't like the D&D world that we got make your own ha take that you know and sure enough that's what a lot of people did and Fantasy Flight deigned to ask the question since since Dungeons and Dragons is based on, um, yeah, since Dungeons and Dragons is based on Lord of the Rings, what would a fantasy world look like if Sauron won? Okay, now, here was the thing. They tried doing all that stuff, but then there came licensing problems with the Tolkien Estate and the other the other companies that already have that. So that's fine, that's perfectly fine. So what they came up with was my favorite type of day, or my favorite time of day, Midnight. That's right, they came up with a game called Midnight. And what this is, in a nutshell, is a game that's based on one singular principle. If the heroes lost and the Dark Lord took over, what then? Okay. And um, this is a fantastic, fantastic look. Um, there were so many different um, expansions for the game. I mean, I've got my copy right here. This is Midnight. It's a hardcover edition. You know, this is a very expensive book, very expensive game. And this was made under the D20 system back in the early 2000s, I believe. Uh, copyright. Let's double check this. Because I believe this was first edition. Copyright 2003. Now, when I tell you guys 
If you wanna get into role playing games, all you need to do is buy the book and it's got you forever. This is what I'm talking about. This book came out in 2003. He says 17 years later. And it still plays just as good. Now this was under the D20 system, which later became the Pathfinder system. So it's um the game mechanics in and of itself are a little it's a little more crunchy it's got a lot more moving parts a lot more fiddly bits if you will um in the gameplay than fifth edition um such as if you don't have a skill or a score and a skill on your sheet if you try it you'll be doing it at a penalty instead of let the dice fall where they may kind of thing um and that works for this game because in this game midnight um there are so many different um expansions and things for this movie fury of the shadow um second edition under the shadow 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 and um this really came about by examining that question you know so what is this game okay what is this game well let's take a look at this now this game um this game is pretty cool um in a nutshell let me see if i can find the mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. nope 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 oh yeah that's what i was looking for here uh-huh there we go now the history of this game okay um is there was a war in heaven and the good guys lost it's that simple the god of corruption fought, um, fought the gods, um, and in a nutshell, he lost. So the gods punished him by banishing, t banishing him. You know, they're like, "Yep, you lost. Get on out for all the turn, all eternities." However, this created the the veil of Isridor. Now, the veil, in and of itself, is sort of a great big wall that keeps the goodies in and the baddies out, and um in a nutshell the wall broke <laughs> the wall broke and he came on in fell out of his cage fell down to earth and all he wanted to do was become a god again and make everyone elves humans dwarves um essentially make them pay just just make them pay he's gonna make them pay by taking away all their magic all of their weapons taking over their lands and in a nutshell, he did. That's what happened. He, he took over everything. And he took away magic. He took away the standard classes that we know of as clerics. And he made them into something else. And he essentially said, I'm in charge, worship me. Oh, and all these other fantasy races like elves and dwarves and gnomes and halflings. Yeah, y'all are illegal. <laughs> y'all are illegal so if you get found you are either gonna be thrust into slavery or exterminated on the spot um fast forward ages and we're talking like a hundred or so thousand years and this is where the game begins this is where your characters come into the game and um you know there's lots of splat books for this thing now one of the things i like is that this is what comes down, this type of game um, comes down to what is known as a dead game, okay? Um, it's, it's for the D20 system, which doesn't exist anymore. And one of the reasons I like that, and I do, I like that, is because coming late to the party means we can get all the stuff and not have to worry about falling behind, not having to worry about whether or not our players um, get their hands on the newest edition of the book and are trying to outdo us or get a little edge, that kind of thing. What's out there is out there. So if you can get all the stuff real quick, like, you know, find a cool bundle on eBay for a hundred or so, hundred or a couple of hundred bucks, um, you're good for 20 years and you can just keep playing this. And, um, Again, you guys might think that this is funny that I keep talking about that. Like I sound like, I kind of sound like that granddad or, you know, yeah, no, what you doing with that bone, boy? No, just, just, 
No, don't don't no, don't throw that bone away. You put that you put that in a pot. Get get some of that other stuff. You got a stew cooking, you know. But um, that's really how it works with role playing games. Now, um, in this world where the bad guy won, now your heroes fighting for survival, plotting and planning to do whatever you can to retake the world or just to get by in it and that is a huge thing um to just try and get by try and um try and bring down bring down the house um here we have the map you know the map of Ethor with the Sea of Peluria and Southeastern Ireland and all that other jazz. Um, all this stuff, when it comes down to it, it's a very, very, very thick world. Okay, it's a thick world to be in, and there is so much material that can be mined from this. Now, if you're wondering, what does he mean by being mined from all this stuff? It's simple. Um, every time you get a um, a new a new system, um, it has a bunch of settings, a bunch of fluff, just so much stuff that's in there: character names, locations, um, major events that happen in the plot line. All of these things can be mined from the game that you have and dropped into the game that you're running um as a lot of you guys know um yeah that is a lot of landmass in there um as a lot of you guys know i run currently a game called esper genesis which is heroic um sci-fi with fantasy elements and it's in space it's out there and the best part for me is that I can land my players on any planet that they crash on. And if they crash on a planet that's Lord of the Rings, but the bad guy won, I can use stuff from this book. If they land on a planet where the computer runs the world and everyone is supposed to be happy, I can pull from paranoia. Heck, um, if I really wanted to, I can put them on a land, um, I can make that planet where everyone is happy all the time and run by the machine that i stole from paranoia and i can make everyone made from candy if i wanted to um that is one of the big things about that now this game itself this is what we used to call in the 90s grim dark okay this is bleak all right there are a few very bleak character settings um uh, or game settings and some of the things, uh, some of them we're going to be covering, such as Call of Cthulhu, or The Scarred Lands, or Dark Sun, or Ravenloft. Yes, I've read all of these things. Um, and this is one of the one of the types of stories that fall into dystopian fantasy. Okay, um, dystopian fantasy comes from the idea of alternate history. Okay, the most popular fantasy that we all know that falls within that genre is George Orwell's 1984. That is a world that's under totalitarian regime. Everything is regimented and regulated and everything is, you know, for the glory of the state. Um, one of the things that goes along there, um, well, before I go there, there are a lot of other pieces of fiction that do this, such as Fahrenheit 451, where the government has such tight control over people that it burns books. Um, <clears throat> um, one of my favorites that just ended on Amazon was called The Man in the High Castle, which was the Nazis won World War II. Now let's look at America and the rest of the world afterwards. You know, um, And these things are interesting because if done well, Okay, if it's done, oh, and another piece of this dystopian fantasy would be um, the, the Purge series, you know. All of these things are social satire and social commentary, but when they're done well, it shows, these stories can show that living under an authoritarian regime sucks for everyone, 
including the authoritarian regime. Um, again, in this book, human is the default race because everything else is illegal. <laughs> it's just, it, it's illegal. Like, I'm not joking when it comes to extermination or um, slavery. I mean, that that's a real thing. And, um, you know, if you might ask, why would I bring that up on this channel? Because I'm a fair man, okay? I'm a very fair man. And when a lot of my friends who aren't exactly woke, I like to call them tossing and turning, um, need to get that little itch out of their chest, I point them to Midnight. I'm like, are we playing D&D or are we playing Midnight? Because you're being rather totalitarian. Um, and don't get me wrong, there are other totalitarian settings within the D20 system and the 5th edition system, such as Ravenloft, you know, but again, um, this book, Midnight, is it in a nutshell it's like what's up with ravenloft oh there's a mystical force field that uh, there's mystical fog that keeps people in yada 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 hubba 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 wugga 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 and it's run by an insane vampire that was our first episode of fluff talk you can listen to it over on um on soundcloud but in midnight there is no veil Okay, you might be able to pierce the veil with enough magic or if you find the right um, artifacts in, um, you know, if you find the right artifacts within Ravenloft, you might be able to defeat Strahd and free the land or at least free yourself, get out of there and don't go back. <clears throat> in Midnight, there ain't no shroud. This is the planet. This is the world. And... It can be run in so many different ways. Of course, the obvious ways are you and your intrepid party um, become the good guys, do what you can to take down the bad guy, bring about the fall of Sauron, <clears throat> let the good gods back in, and, you know, wonder and happiness for all. Now, the thing that makes this setting different from a lot of the stories that you guys might have heard of in other mediums like Lord of the Rings or Warcraft or Starcraft is that this world isn't like it's bleak to live there but it isn't barren. Now this is a really big thing about this game and one of the reasons that I held on to it. In a lot of fantasy settings and role-playing games you'll see it in if you watch the Lord of the Rings trilogy um, from New Line um, wherever the Dark Lord ruled the land was dead it was the land was dead and scarred there was nothing but industry there was nothing but badness haba 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 and in this one the bleakness isn't something that you can see because there's grass <laughs> there's nature happening because the bad, you know, the big Dark Lord still wants a functioning planet, you know? So there are farms, there are forests. Um, the elves that are split up in this setting um, are scattered across the world, but there are sea elves and forest elves and mountain elves and jungle elves. So there's life. There's wildlife, there's growth, there's flora and fauna. The people, however, are very dark. And I don't mean dark. I mean the people serve the Dark Lord. And they're the ones that are out hunting the elves and the dwarves and starting wars and, you know, fighting the resistance. So if you think about it, this doesn't happen very often in fiction. And you might go, well, what about Star Wars? Yeah, let's talk about Star Wars. Every place that the Empire ruled that we saw on film, okay, I'm just talking about the movies because the books go way, way, way deep. But everywhere that you saw was all Coruscant. Everything was big, futuristic, flashy cities. There's no wood. There, there's no wood. There's just flashy cities and mining. That's it. You know? Oh, no, wait. That's not it. I forgot desert. Desert planets. Lots and lots of desert. Now, with, um, I believe it was 
the second of the new trilogy, you got to see a planet with animals and stuff like that where they had the casino scene. But outside of that, every place that that you get to see in all of these places are either nature that's being conquered to be industrialized by the empire or it's already been industrialized or it's Hoth and Tatooine, okay? I mean, that's just what it is. So city or barren, that's what the focus of evil is and that is straight out of Tolkien. When you watch, um, when you watch or read The Lord of the Rings, everywhere that Sauron goes, no plants live any longer and the waters are polluted. And it's, and I always wondered, when the bad guy takes over, why do they have to make it so that the place they take over sucks? Like, don't they want fruit? <laughs> you know, aren't they gonna have to eat? Like, an ecosystem is important. And Midnight covers that. Midnight makes it very clear. No, there are land masses. And it's a lot of land. It's a whole lot of land around here. And that land grows things. And people live there. And they still make a living. They don't just scrape by eating dust, you know? Um, and the storylines that come through and a lot of the stuff... Um, that comes out in a lot of the um, source material like at the time these things were like $15 you know um, give a lot of expansion on the world about who lives there what their lives are like what is it like living under um, the shadow of this fallen god um, are you just a regular person trying to get by do you work for the bad guy against your will do you work for the bad guy because you don't know anything else? Um, you know, it, it's definitely a lot of those questions that get asked. And the reason for this is you don't want your fantasy setting to not be livable. Because there comes a certain point where as a player or a reader or a watcher, you got to start asking yourself, what is there worth saving? You know, once you glass the planet, <laughs> what are you gonna do, you know? Yes, I will save the world from the Dark Lord because this will be my big hunk of charcoal. Or what else are you gonna do after that? I'm gonna take the planet-wide city and run it for myself? Great, so you just became the bad guy. You, you see what I mean? So, <clears throat> this book in and of itself, excuse me, <clears throat> This book and this game setting in and of itself answers a lot of those questions. Now, there is a company out there which I find fascinating. Um, it's called Green Apple TV. And why do I find these guys fascinating? Well, I find these guys fascinating. Um, at Green Apple TV because these guys, um, when did they do this? Back in 2015, got funding and made a fan film. Let's take a look at it real quick. Not the whole thing, of course. And the time of the second storm shall be preceded by the awakening of the harbinger and the last king. They shall be called to a place of secrets forgotten by time and shadow. There they shall set in motion events that will shake the foundations of the earth and the heavens. You know, but if you guys notice, yeah, the land is ruled by the Dark Lord. But look at this. I know I'm starting to sound like our former president, but look, there's grass, there's wildlife. <laughs> there's a whole bunch of stuff out there, you know? So yeah, I mean, we're not talking about the world going nuts and becoming a rackus, you know? Um, yeah, this, this really isn't anything about that. You guys should check it out. It's called The Midnight Chronicles. Um, hang on, let me see if I can pull this up real quick yeah it's called the midnight chronicles full movie hundred thousand views on youtube you can watch it for free i didn't have to spend any money on it 
And um, it's a fan film of pretty high quality. And with that, I'm saying it's better than most of the Dungeons and Dragons movies. Or, okay, it's about as good as the rest of the Dungeons and Dragons movies. But when you've got $5,000, two cakes of beer, and a pocket full of chewing gum, they did really good with this. Um, so yeah, this is a really good setting. And again, if you know how to run um like if you want to know how to run a dystopian future that doesn't look bleak but feels bleak um this game is a fantastic place to start a lot of people don't like it because they have their own ideas and you know one thing we know about gamers um is when we think something is supposed to look a certain way and it don't, um, that's when most of our minds just close. So shout out to the free thinkers out there that go, you know what? Yeah, if the bad guy won, they wouldn't glass the world. Um, it wouldn't be slavery and rape for breakfast. It would literally just be, I run the bad stuff, you stay in line. And if you don't stay in line, then we got places for you. You know, this is one of the things I really do appreciate in good fiction. Now, I know you guys know me as a pretty bright spirit. You know, you you guys know I like, um, I like, you know, heroic stories and aspirational heroes and stuff like that. But I what you know, I went through my edgy phase too. You know, everybody does. Um, but one of the things that got me, like Crown of Shadows, is a real. It, this is a big one. Okay. Um, ooh, man, can't even show that one, but Crown of Shadows, this is a module, also known as a, um, an adventure, and let's take a look. This adventure is for, I believe, zero level? Ah, yeah, this is a first to fifth level campaign. Okay, and you play your characters and you can be the good guys and you're going on this quest and you're the underdogs fighting against a world that hates you. Now, I realize <laughs> that we talk a lot on this channel about role playing. <laughs> I do, I, I, I get that. I know we talk a lot about role playing. Um, and with that, with us talking about role playing, part of role playing is um, what is this from? I'm looking for having experiences outside of your normal experience. I understand that. I'm even a big fan of that. Um, simultaneously, yeah. Sorry, I had to do some stuff with the screen over there. Um, yeah. Simultaneously, some of the stuff that you know, sometimes in order to feel accomplished. We want to see ourselves in a heightened reality of where we are. And the whole idea of this world hates the good guys, the world I live in hates me. Well, I can't punch my boss or hit my boss with an ax. So, um, I'm gonna play an epic heroic character that has stolen magic and a really big ax, and I'm gonna go kill some orc. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna kill some orc and I'm gonna bring down the system, man. And then when I find the Dark Lord, I'm gonna throw him to the ground. Yeah. And the rest of the cake too, you know? And, um, you know, there there is a place. You guys hear me say all the time, there is a time and a place for everything and everyone. And the setting of midnight is where I keep my time and place to get dark, you know? Um, I definitely keep it around, as I said, since I run an outer space game, I can easily set them down on planets that remind me of other settings. We had a talk a few weeks ago about skinning games, which is applying the mechanics that you know to a setting that you like. Um, and I normally go, you know, fantasy to sci-fi, but sometimes I can go back. I can take sci-fi, put a fantasy skin on them, and throw them down on a planet. 
And it's like, on this planet, you got this, you know, this is the world that there is. Well, we have to save the world. Are you sure? You know, and all of these things make for three dimensional storytelling, which is what I'm in. I'm into games for. And I think a lot of you guys are into games for as well. Um, as far as feeling special and doing cool stuff. That's all up to each individual dungeon master. So, if you guys are asking the question, where can I get this game? Because it actually sounds kind of interesting. I would like to take a look at it. Maybe read a pamphlet. Well, there's a lot of places. Um, of course, you can find it on Drive Through RPG. Um, and there we go. Nope, nope, nope. That's Midnight Masses. Yeah, there we go. Now, if you want to go through, um, if you want to go through something like the Ebays, here we go. Uh, I believe, yeah, you can find this book for about $37. Um, yes, yes, you are seeing 142, 175. Those are first edition collector's pieces. And if you feel like paying that, hey man, that's all you. And of course, um, the, the PDFs, um, I believe, let me double check. Um, Midnight RPG, Midnight Chronicles, <laughs> the Midnight Chronicles package, nope, nope, nope. That's where to order the DVD if you so feel like looking at it. Uh, yeah, Midnight Nation. Oh, wait. Midnight from Fantasy Flight. That's what I'm looking for. But yeah, places like um, RPG.net, Drive Through RPG, um, Fantasy Flight. And of course, you can still get a copy. Um, from fantasyflight.com. Here we go. Now, I'm over here at Drive Through RPG because I do a lot of stuff through these guys, and they always have good resources. And yeah, second edition core rulebook, ten bucks. Ah, ten bucks as a PDF. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. And you can get all this other stuff. Most of this is in PDF form. And we're talking 10 bucks here, six bucks there, seven bucks there. So, um, in truth, totally accessible. Like I said, um, I managed to pick up, um, I managed to pick up this copy when I worked at a role playing game store back in 2003. And then I gave it to a friend and he recently gave it back. So <laughs> that's, that's an interesting thing, but yeah, so, um, those are the things that you can do and i would definitely say check out midnight it is a fun game well the gameplay itself is much like any other role-playing game completely up to your dungeon master's preparedness um you will very rarely hear me say well you know this game isn't good because i think i could do no no no, no i'm not that guy um if your gm is into it and the group is into it it's going to be fun but this the, just the fluff alone on this game is thick with ideas. And I'm a big fan of saying that inspiration can come from anywhere. Absolutely anywhere. Um, yeah, absolutely anywhere. And someone liked this game so much, they made a fan film. Like, just, just think about that for a moment. Um... I mean, I might be working eventually on a fan film for Esper Genesis if I can get the money. But um, these guys already did one for Midnight. Like, yeah, this world is dark and it sucks. And honestly, um, I watched this movie a little earlier this week. And what I will say is if you like cheesy fantasy, if you didn't, if, if you don't mind, like, the st straight to sci-fi movies check out that one um truth be told on the back in the deck rating system it's a pair 
on a good day, it's really a 10 high. I mean, really, it, it is a high card. It is not that great a movie as far as filmmaking or acting or writing and all that stuff goes. But we also do love ourselves some Dolomite, and it's kind of on that level. Actually, it's it has better filmmaking than most of Rudy Ray Moore's stuff. So lower your expectations and check out the world that it's set in. Let's, uh, let's take a quick look over at NP City. How you guys doing? That's right, Vixen. Yeah, again, elves in space. Um, that's really easy because, you know, um, in Esper Genesis, it's, they're the Nodori in Star Trek. They're both Vulcan and Romulan and Reman. So that's actually, Remans are more like space orcs. But, um, but yeah, so I mean, that is, that's a real, real thing. So <clears throat> these are a lot of things that you can do with these settings, all right? So that is my lookout. Again, if nothing else, the fluff in this is really fun. Um, just the ideas that um, these writers, matter of fact, who are the writers? Let's take a look at this. Boop, boop, boop. Do, 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 do. Greg Benanji, um, Jeff Barber, Will Upchurch, yeah, and yeah, Greg Benang, B E N A G E, so Benage. Um, these guys did a whole lot of good stuff in answering the question of when the bad guys win, what then? You know, and I'm a big fan of that idea. Um, I always like to know what happens after the credits roll. You know, like with Lord of the Rings, after they defeated Sauron and they went off to the Grey Havens. Well, what do the Grey Havens look like? What they do there? Did they just sit around getting their feet rubbed all day while eating turkey legs? If so, I want to see at least five minutes of that. Um, when the bad guys win. Mwahahaha. What happened after that? You know, at the end of The Exorcist, was Reagan okay? Of course, we get sequels, but you know, sometimes I don't. I I, I like a series following a movie. So, um, and with Midnight, it literally is the day-to-day -day lives of the people that live in a world. Hang on. That was conquered by the bad guy. So that's big. That's big. That's good. And I. I highly recommend it. So, um, I'm going to cut today's episode really short because there's some other stuff that I have to get to today. Um, again, I love you guys. Uh, I love you guys like barbecue. I really do. But there's a lot of things that I have to take care of today, so I kind of had to call out early. Um, we'll be back on our regular schedule next week. Um, I am going to be here tomorrow for the hobby haul and I took a look at a lot of the stuff that I've been showing you guys how to make and I'm like what am I gonna do in regards to what I've been showing them how to make I don't I don't get it um wait a minute I've been showing them walls I've been showing them gates I've been showing them stone techniques so tomorrow we are gonna talk about floors and maps um, the ups and downsides to each one and I'm going to show you guys how to make manageable dungeon tiles because everybody out there can show you how to make dungeon tiles everybody there's it, it, it's always a thing like can I make dungeon tiles of course you can make dungeon tiles that is that's a real thing that's oh man look at that yeah you can make dungeon tiles you can make dungeon tiles really easily and um well, okay, I'm just being moved all over the place. Am I not? This is that 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 got weird. Um, but I want to show you guys um some manageable dungeon tiles. And when I say manageable, a decent size, a size that's easy to transport and easy to store. Um, because between the thing that must not be named and a lot of the stuff that um I have to use to keep it at bay. I don't have a whole lot of space here in the wizard's tower. And that says a lot because it's a tower. Um, one of these days I will show you guys, you know, I'm working on an opening credit sequence so that you guys can see the outside of this place for the first time in a while. So yeah, so what I'm gonna have to do is I am being played out, which is awesome. 
yeah so i'm being played out so with that i'm gonna say thank you guys for showing up thank you guys in np city for holding it down and if you guys are just making it and don't think i ha don't think i don't see you there chasing don't don't think i don't see you I, I see you there um thank you guys and if you guys got any questions or comments or anything in that in that vein that's easy just pull up your keyboard and type in back in the deck at gmail.com it's b-a-c-k-i-n-t-h-e-d-e-c-k at gmail.com um Join us on the Instagram, drop us a line, give us some likes. Oh my God, what is wrong with my title sequence? Let me oh, I change that. Okay, yeah, um, hit us up. And of course, um, you know, hit us up on our Instagram. Check out a lot of the stuff that we've been putting up. That's where you are guaranteed to get the notifications of when our next performance and all that jazz is gonna be. And of course, Hit us up on the rest of our social media. Um, join Deckers on the group. Follow us on Twitter. Um, especially if you need a break from politics, we don't talk about that here. At least not actual politics. We talk about the fiction and politics of the bad guy ruling the world and all that stuff. And um, if you guys got art, like fan art, or you, know, you do drawings or you paint your miniatures, head on over to Deckers on the book. Post some of that stuff up. I would love love to get enough of you guys doing that stuff to do a showcase on like hey this is something that that mike did this is something that lena did you know that would be awesome um again um love you guys oh my god what what is happening there that is yeah that wasn't happy that was not happy at all there we go yeah like i said oh better god i lost my dice love you guys like barbecue um if you guys want to help us out you know, if you missed this episode, that's easy. Just head on over to our SoundCloud. You'll be able to download the episode and all that jazz. If you want to help us out a little more directly, head on over to Patreon, get your decorating, you know, um, like um, Her Majesty the Queen Shannon Lay, His Majesty King Paul um, Mansfield, and our ace in the hole, Jennifer Kroll. Again, I really don't like speaking in rhyme, but what can I do? It, that It happens sometimes. D damn it! Um, so with that, I'm going to say thank you guys for showing up, and if anybody tells you that you can't like what you like because of the circumstances of your birth, be it race, religion, creed, gender identity, sexual orientation, your disability, or your budget, you tell them that we said to take those cards and put them back in the deck. This is Solar Gray, the cinematic source. We're saying thank you guys for joining me in the game gallery.